Oh, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I bring you another in the Human Rainbow series that I have been doing for quite some time now on coloring different ethnicities. And this one is a stamp set from The Greeting Farm. I'm also including on my blog today a downloadable or pinnable shading map, and this shows you where the shadows would be from the upper left or upper right. And you can either print it out and keep it in your stamp storage so that you have that to refer to or just leave it on your Pinterest to pull up when you start coloring. I stamped all four of the images in one scene together. The ones that are in the front of the image were stamped first, then I masked them out with some masking tape and stamped the ones behind. And all of this is done on Nina cardstock, my favorite for coloring with my Copics. And then off to the side, I have my shading map. So I'm following along with that with lighting coming from the upper right hand side. So I'm adding my shadows on this little girl. I'm going to be making her kind of a Latina. And so I'm giving her some beefy color but trying not to get too heavy with it. And know that when you're coloring just the skin first and you don't have any other colors around it to compare to, it's going to potentially feel dark. So sometimes what I do is just color the first one, move on to the second, move on to the third, and then at the very end I go back and look again and say, okay, are some of the colors weak? Do they need to be strengthened? Did I use enough? Did I use too much? And I have to go back and rework to lighten up some areas. So I think she came out really wonderfully, and now I'm going to color her little friend here with a different set of colors. And I wanted to compare for you what it looks like if you're going to use a pinky kind of purple, like this V12 for the shadows, um, versus using some BVs. Normally I use BVs. But here I'm using an E53, which is a duller brown, because the duller brown is going to tone back some of that super pinkiness from the V12. But you, you get a little bit of the vibrance of the V12 still showing through that, which is kind of cool. Now on this one, I wanted to make sure I added a stronger shadow underneath where her hair and her bow were and some of the deeper shadows. So I did that with a BV, but then I felt like I was losing some of that V12. So I went back in with a little bit more of it, just a few light touches to smooth out the blending. It can also be helpful to not worry about coloring over top of the whites of the eyes and just go over it with a gel pen at the end. I didn't wait till the card was done because I was pretty confident that if I go back over any of those areas, I can go around the eyeballs if I do any adjustments of color. Now on this little girl, I'm using a V20, not a BV or a, a um, really pinky violet, but I'm using a dull violet. And combining that again with the same E53, that duller brown, because I didn't want too much of the sting of that color. And then added my mid-tone and my my other colors, my lighter colors, to try to do some blending. She's feeling a little bit yellow, and I will do some adjustment to that later, but I wanted to get some other colors in here to have something to compare to before I start doing major adjustments to try to brighten that up. Now this little girl is going to be African American. I wanted her to have good dark skin tone, so I'm using a, a decent base color and then a really dark color for the shadows. For many people, this will be too dark, but know that you can add more of the mid-tone color to lighten up some of that if it gets to be too much. So sometimes the lighter colors, the lighter shades of brown, can start to erase as you start doing your blending, will erase a little bit of that really dark color. And I, I'm just gonna go over a bunch of this and kind of scribble color around to try to get the blending going. and lighten up color enough around her eyes so that you can see them because you don't want that to totally disappear into utter darkness necessarily. But if you start coloring over it too much and all of that starts to bleed then you have issues beyond that. So it's better to try with a little lighter color so you may want to start with lighter browns than what I did in my shadow areas. Now I'm going to run through all the hair colors here and I decided to start with her because I knew she was going to have black hair. And I'm going to give her some kind of kinky curls by going over a, a good, you know, really good mid gray for my base tone with a warm gray for my little curls. I'm just making little squiggly lines. And I'm going to go outside the lines a little bit because I'm going to go over 
with a multi-liner as well and add more detail to it. But I want to give her sort of a little bit of a brown feeling kind of color, which is why I picked this warm gray for the second one. I'm just going to go through all these areas and just give her a little bit of scribbles so she gets a little bit of that curly hair look. Now if you're using your doing your pen work as your very final step, you can use any black pen if you want to have the option to work in some more Copic marker or like here I'm going to be coloring things that are right next to where I'm drawing this, the bow and clothing and things, then you want to use a multi-liner which is a pen that will not bleed with Copic markers. So I'll add a little bit of darker shadows with my black Copic and then move on to one of my next ones. Now for her I could have done her, I was thinking about doing her in a brown, but then I didn't want her hair to melt into the face off to her right. I didn't want to get those colors confused. So I decided she would be a blondish type of girl. And I'm actually using a V15, yes, a purple for my shadows. It's a complementary color. And if you've taken the Copic Jumpstart class on my website, then you will know why that's working because it's a complement and that's just one of those things that happens. So I'm going to add a little bit of really light lines and generally following along the area where all those lines already are in the stamp set in this particular one and in a lot of the greeting farm they give you just a little guidance as to the lines for the hair so you don't have to make up too much of it it's not just one big open empty shape so if you follow along with those lines and you're pretty good I'm gonna add a good amount of this YR21 just so I can break up some of this but leave a little bit of that linearness. I'm gonna add more to it, but this undercoat I wanna have a little bit softer. And I like having layers where some of it's softer, some of it's harder edged, and I, I get some real depth in terms of the texture. So now I took an E23, a, kind of a mid to light type of brown, and I'm adding more in the shadow areas, that sort of thing. I wasn't going as slowly as I should have because I was trying to get this thing done. I was trying to see how much I could squeeze into a 10 or 11 minute video. Uh, this is sped up ever so slightly. I think it's about 150%, so it's not too fast. But I was working quickly to try to get lots of coloring done for you on this. This next girl I decided I wanted her to have brown hair, but I wanted it to have a little bit of an orangey undertone to it. So I'm going to put my orange down first and then start going in with my darker colors. So often just at the tips of hair is a really good place to just put some shadow colors and some of these lines. And anywhere coming out from either a, a barrette or a hat or anything like that is a really good place to put a, a good heavy shadow line or anywhere where the stamp lines indicate there may be some shadows. So I'll add these really dark areas, lots more dark underneath. Whenever you're talking about the underside of the hair, something behind the neck, under the chin, there's often darker colors in that area. And now I'll go over the same color that I had just put there with a mid-tone brown, a reddish mid-tone brown, and start adding more so that I end up having just a little bit of that orange showing through as highlights. And even in that part underneath of her head, I'm just going to really make that a good solid brown because there's no need to have some highlights coming in from back there. Do a little bit of touch up with the orange and then I'll move on to my last little girl. I wanted her to have really dark brown hair and you can do it in a lighter brown and leave some of the lighter highlights showing, but I wanted her to be really dark brown in contrast to the auburn girl right next to her. So I'm just using a really good solid brown. Now this is a brown you may have noticed if you're watching the color numbers that I used in some of the other areas of this image. I like to use the same markers in a couple different ways. Partially to just experiment with what happens when I mix this color with that color or mix this amount of this color with this amount of that color. But also because I'm lazy and if I have the marker out I'm just going to grab it from my table or whatever rather than digging for a new marker taking a darker brown and adding in a bunch of shadows like again underneath of her chin and behind her and stuff it's going to be really dark and then allow some of that E47 to show through as highlights but they're not really bright highlights they're nice dark highlights as you can see and then I'm going to go in at the end with my 
my 100, my black marker, and really give her some good solid darks because that's going to give her some real contrast in her hair. And I'm going to add detail back into any of the places where I lost it when I started adding in a bunch of the E29. And make sure she's got plenty of good hair texture as I go around the image. Now, as I was doing this, I was realizing that this is going to get to be a really long video and you guys abandon my videos when they get really long a lot of times. So the coloring of the clothing is all available for my patrons. My patrons over on the Patreon site, those who pledge $10 a month or more, get a bonus video every single month and they got to see the clothing. So I have posted that one over there for the $10 and up patrons. But I did want to show you, I went back in for my little girl here and I gave her a little more color. I wanted her to have just a little more warmth to her skin. So that's how I did a little bit of adaptation at the very end. For my card, I just added it onto a panel with some red behind it and my sentiment I cut out of a little circle and glued it on top with some dimensional adhesive. And there it is. Cute as anything, right? little kitty and puppy dog joining them. Well, if you'd like to see some more in the Human Rainbow series, there is a whole playlist, but the, these are three of the videos that are within that playlist to see how to color more ethnic skin tones and do different things with hair. If you haven't subscribed yet, you're welcome to do that. And there's more on the blog, including all the supplies, as well as that shading map. So don't forget to go pin that, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.